Hey everybody, Mark the Mortician here. I hope everybody's doing great. Hope they had a great Thanksgiving. I'm sorry I haven't been on here in a while, but it is the Christmas season. If you are one who celebrates Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah. And if you don't celebrate anything, then happy not celebration of anything. So, sorry I haven't been on here in a while. I'm in my car right now, obviously. That's my little girl, Abby. We're taking a little road trip uh, for a few days for the holiday season. So, I think the last time I was on here, I did, I tried YouTube Live, which I don't know if it went great. I don't know if you could see me good. I know I had to put on a light, and I think it's still there, and you're able to, like, play it, I think. But the last time the topic was um, dead man walking at his own funeral. And that to me is an interesting topic and I'll tell you why. Because he was propped up on the wall. He was kitty cornered in the on the wall and he was there for his own services. Now some might think of that being morbid taboo, bad luck, bad karma. It's none of that, people. It's none of that. This is a new generation, okay? And what that means is it's a new generation, so people come up with different ideas. Do you know what I mean? People come up with different ideas, and that's how some people mourn. Somebody came up with that idea. I don't believe it was the funeral home that did. The family put something in the minds of the director of the family service council or whatever, and that's where it transpired. And I think it's brilliant. You had one person on his motorcycle, two people on their motorcycle, one person um, at a table, sitting at a table. I think it's amazing. I really do. And you know how I feel about that, being in the business. I would love to embalm a body and set it up on a motorcycle, on a bicycle, on, on a couch, at a table. I'd love to set somebody up at a table where, uh, hold on, I just got to turn into this lane here. Sorry, a lot of traffic and bad weather. Um, I would love to set somebody up at a table, cross their legs, have their arms folded or on the table somehow and just have them sitting there, put sunglasses on so they don't see their eyes are closed. You know, uh, that would be amazing. I would love to do that. Will we have it done in the states of the United States? I think it already has been done, as a matter of fact. Granted, most of them has been done, most of them have been done in Puerto Rico. They'll come here, absolutely. That's a trend now. It's an existing trend that somebody started and it will manif- manifest itself in the States. You watch. Oops. Uh, sorry, this is a horrible video. I just feel bad for not making one. Like, I love making videos for you guys. I love this topic. I love just getting your feedback and comments. And I love you all. I appreciate you, all of my subscribers, everybody who follows me. Thank you. I wouldn't be doing this without you. So another topic of discussion really quick, I've touched on this a few times, and that's euthanasia. I recently saw a video where this Canadian woman who was suffering, I don't know what she was suffering from, she made a video about how she was going to Switzerland, all the paperwork was signed for, um, the funds were, you know, paid for, everything was taken care of for this woman's euthanasia. And the document on YouTube that she made was a video of her basically saying how she felt and she was dictating a letter she was writing for the Canadian government saying how they should implement this law that people should be able to be euthanized and I think it's again as you know if you've been following me I think it's an amazing concept If you're sick, terminally ill, you know, you meet the necessary 
requirements, the necessary qualifications, there should be no issue with that. You know what I mean? God forbid if you're 25 years old and you're terminally ill and you don't want to suffer, you should have that right. You're an adult as a child if you're terminally ill. And you tell your parents, hey, I'm suffering, mommy. Is there any way out? And the parents come together and say, this is what we want. It should be legalized. It should be legalized. As long as you meet the necessary requirements. So with that being said, you know, if it's a family member and I'm seeing them suffer, God forbid, would I be able to do it? I have no idea. I'd want, I'd be like... I'd want to keep reaching for that hope. Like, okay, something's going to happen. Something's good, good, something good is going to happen here. A miracle is going to happen. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a cure. You know, whatever. I don't know if I could do that. Say, okay, you know, you're going to die with dignity. Think about it, people. Put, your, put yourself in those people's shoes. If you had a family member suffering and there was no getting around whatever they had and you had the option of saying, okay, you know, or if they're of sound mind and they came to the conclusion where they didn't want to suffer any longer and they did it themselves, well, then you'd have to accept it. Of course, you could try to talk them out of it and change their minds, but if there's no hope, you have six months to live, there's no cure, nothing we can do, God forbid, you know, why make them suffer? Well, put put you in their shoes. Could you do it? Comment below. Could you see yourself in that predicament and how would you react? I'd be grasping on hope, like, okay, you know, just one more day. Let, let's see what happens. Let's see if there's a change. Let's see if she comes out of it, you know, whatever it is. I, I think that's what I would be doing. And it's selfish on my part. But it's normal also, you know what I mean? It's a normal, that's a normal feeling. You don't want to let somebody that you love go, a parent, sibling, friend. You don't want to let them go. Watch them die. But you'd rather have them, you'd rather watch them suffer to die. There's the catch-22 people. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Um, Make sure you go on Facebook and like Thomas Funeral Consulting. It might still be under Florida Funeral Consulting. I did change the name. So like us, Thomas Funeral Consulting. I'll give you a brief... um, synopsis of what I do. I consult families before they select a funeral home and I create a budget with them and I go over what they want in a service and what funeral homes are in the immediate location of where they are. So we come up with a budget and what funeral home meets that budget and their needs the best. And that's what I do. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, share these videos. Let's go viral, people. Let's go viral. More great topics to come. And if there's a particular topic you want me to talk about, even if I don't know about it, I'll research it and I'll discuss it. Let me know. Shoot me an email. um, Shoot me a message on Facebook, Thomas Funeral Consulting, whatever. Let me know and we'll discuss it. All right. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share my videos. And... I'll be on here before Christmas and Hanukkah. But just in case, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. I do celebrate Christmas, just so you know. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.